जय हिंद एवरी वन माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर वन्ना शर्मा फ्रॉम अजय कुमार गर्ग इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज गाजियाबाद माई सब्जेक्ट इज इंजीनियरिंग फिजिक्स एंड द टॉपिक विच टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस द टॉपिक इज सुपर कंडक्टिविटी अंडर दिस टॉपिक ऑफ सुपर कंडक्टिविटी द वेरियस पॉइंट विच आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस द फर्स्ट वन इज द इंट्रोडक्टरी पार्ट ऑफ दिस फिनोमिन ऑफ सुपर कंडक्टिविटी After this, I will discuss the basic parameters, which are actually the deciding factors uh, in case of superconductors. So we will discuss about this uh, parameter, which is critical temperature for our superconductors. The next parameter is critical magnetic field, and the third one, which is mentioned over here, that particular parameter is also related to critical magnetic field, but with a different name. So how these two are interrelated? we will discuss uh, uh, in this particular topic and finally we will discuss about a very important characteristic of superconductors which is uh, given by masner effect so these are the topics for uh, today's discussion so when i am referring this word superconductivity then i am referring uh, to those materials which shows uh, infinitely high conductivity as the name as the word itself suggests that superconductivity means a material which is having superconductivity means infinitely high conductivity so those materials those metals ceramics or alloys which shows this phenomena of zero resistivity or infinitely high conductivity those materials are known as superconductors so basically superconductivity is one of nature's most alluring quantum phenomena and this particular phenomena was discovered approximately 100 years ago so this particular phenomena of superconductivity that was given in 1911 and since then we have seen tremendous application of superconductors in different different fields for example since superconductors they have zero resistivity or infinitely high conductivity so superconductors they can conduct without any energy losses so these superconductors they have application in transmission then superconductors they have application in medical diagnostics like they have application in mri technique uh superconductors they are also responsible for uh, levitating as well as propulsion of the fastest train of uh, fastest train that is maglev so uh, these superconductors these materials they have applications in different different fields so today we are going to discuss these materials here and uh, uh, the basic parameters related to these materials uh the basic idea uh, about superconductivity or you can say the credit for the discovery of superconductivity that goes to this dutch physicist hake uh, kamalang owns so he along with his team in 1911 they discovered that uh, when we will uh, reduce the temperature of a particular metal actually they was uh, they were studying the uh, variation of resistivity uh, for matter at very low temperature so what they discovered uh, they discovered that uh, for mercury resistivity that reduces to zero resistivity that will start uh, uh, above 4.2 kelvin there was a normal variation of resistivity with temperature but as soon as that temperature approaches to 4.2 kelvin but they discovered but they observed that there was a fast decrease in the resistivity or resistance and in a very small temperature interval of 0.0 kelvin that resistivity will become zero means below 4.2 kelvin that material was showing zero resistivity and we know the conductivity and resistivity both are having a inverse relationship so since below that 4.2 kelvin mercury was in a new state and in that state resistivity was zero so if the resistivity is zero then we know conductivity that will be infinitely high so this particular phenomena for first time it was observed by uh, kamalang owns and his team and what they observed they have seen that below 4.2 kelvin the material was in a new state mercury was in a new state that was in a state with infinitely high conductivity and we can say that below 4.2 kelvin the material is in zero resistance state or in superconducting state 
whereas above 4.2 kelvin the material is in normal conducting state so as you can see that this particular temperature 4.2 kelvin which is a very low temperature at this 4.2 kelvin the material is in a new state that is superconducting state so this first parameter this temperature is playing a very important role in case of superconductors so the first deciding factors for superconductors is the temperature below which the transition from normal state to superconducting state will take place so uh, here i am going to discuss that particular parameter so the first parameter or the first deciding factor for superconductors is their critical temperature or you can say the transition temperature so you can see from this particular graph along y axis we have resistivity or you can say resistance whereas along x axis we have temperature so as you can see from this particular graph if you have a normal material normal metal which is not having any potential uh, to show this uh, zero resistivity or infinitely high conductivity that will show this type of variation for resistivity with temperature so what i'm trying to say here if this material is a normal material and uh, it is not having any potential to show superconductivity then its its resistivity will gradually decrease with the decrease in temperature that is a behavior for normal material but in case of superconductors uh, initially above this transition temperature which is represented by tc above this transition temperature the material is a normal conducting state uh, slowly or gradually that resistivity will decrease with the decrease in temperature and as soon as the temperature approaches to that critical temperature that resistivity will suddenly fall to zero and it will become zero and conductivity will become infinitely high so this uh, temperature is a important parameter this is the transition temperature or you can say this is the critical temperature for superconductors so you have to remember that materials metals ceramics or alloys which has the potential to show the superconductivity they will show they will uh, they, they will uh, give this phenomena or you can say this phenomena of superconductivity that will be highlighted only if those materials are kept at a temperature which is less than their transition or critical temperature so uh, so uh, below critical temperature a superconductor that shows zero resistivity and you already know if the material shows zero resistivity then it will give us infinite conductivity or infinitely high conductivity uh, so this is our first parameter which is the deciding factor for superconductors so in other words i can say a material will show superconductivity only if it is kept at a temperature t which is less than tc here the material is in superconducting state whereas in this reason the material is in normal conducting state now the question arises that why some materials uh, are showing this zero resistivity or infinitely high conductivity so uh, time to time different different theories were given to explain this phenomena of superconductivity and uh, out of those theories one is based upon free electron theory and according to free electron theory of metals we know that resistivity is actually given by this relationship resistivity which is represented by rho it is m upon n e square tau where this tau is actually the relaxation time rest other factors like this m is representing the mass of electron n is representing the density of electrons means in unit volume how many electrons are there e that is representing the charge on electron and this uh, important factor that factor is actually rho rho is the relaxation time uh, so uh, basically this uh, this phenomena of superconductivity that is observed in certain materials at very low temperature uh, up to 1980 uh, 1986 uh, it was uh, it was only known that superconductors they show this phenomena only at very very low temperatures um but now we have a different class of superconductors which can show superconductivity even at higher temperature but mostly the superconducting materials they are giving us this superconductivity at a very low temperature so at low temperature what is that reason because of which you are getting zero resistivity that uh, reason or that uh, answer lies in this particular formula at low temperatures 
uh, low temperature actually uh, the uh, lattice vibration or the movement of electrons those lattice vibration will get freeze and because of those um, lattice vibrations which will get freeze at low temperature this relaxation time will become longer so when the relaxation time will become longer or we can say this relaxation time will be infinitely high so when this row sorry when this tau which is representing relaxation time if that 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 row is very long then obviously rest of the factors are constant so this uh, resistivity that will be very small so when the resistivity is small then conductivity will be high so this free electron theory that that is one way to uh, uh, explain the reason of superconductivity in these materials uh, but we have different different theories which we will discuss in our uh, next lectures uh, for uh, superconductivity uh, so the first parameter which we have already discussed uh, for superconductors is critical temperature so actually critical temperature is that transition temperature below which the material is in a new state that is superconducting state above which the material is in normal conducting state and it will behave like normal conducting material different different materials they have different critical temperatures for example if you have mercury then for mercury uh, as you know the critical temperature is 4.2 kelvin means 4.2 below 4.2 kelvin the material is in superconducting state whereas above 4.2 kelvin the material is in normal conducting state so for different different materials this critical temperature is different for example for lead this critical temperature is close to 7.2 kelvin but you have to remember if you have isotopes for same material then for those different different isotopes of same materials that critical temperature is different but if we are taking two different materials then this critical temperature is actually depending upon the type of material so for tin this critical temperature is 3.72 kelvin so i hope up to now this point is clear that critical temperature is playing a very important role uh, according to which we can decide whether the material is in superconducting state or in normal state uh, now if uh, suppose you have a material which can show superconductivity but that material you know it will show superconductivity when t is less than tc you know that this behavior this phenomenon of superconductivity that is observed only below critical temperature so now what you have you have a material and in that material uh, it is kept at a temperature t which is less than tc so obviously if the material is kept at a temperature which is less than critical temperature the material will be in superconducting state so your material which which has the potential to show superconductivity and its temperature is kept below its critical temperature for example if you have a lead then you know for lead this critical temperature is 7.2 kelvin suppose that material is kept at a temperature which is less than 7.2 kelvin so obviously according to temperature material will be in superconducting state there is one more parameter which is known as critical magnetic field so this critical magnetic field is another deciding factor for the state of a superconducting material this magnetic field that can change the state of material from superconducting to normal state means below the critical temperature actually this magnetic field that can convert the material from superconducting state to normal state means even below critical temperature your material which has the potential to show superconductivity that can regain its normal conducting state that can uh, reverse back to its normal conducting state and that can be done just by applying an external magnetic field but this uh, uh, that state of material below critical temperature that is actually the combination of two factors those two factors uh, uh, they are going to decide the state of material the first one is temperature and the second one is magnetic field if the temperature is below critical temperature then obviously with respect to the temperature condition material is in superconducting state but even if the temperature is below tc we can regain that normal conducting state so below critical temperature 
at a temperature at a fixed temperature t the amount of magnetic field the minimum amount of magnetic field which is required to change the state of material from superconducting state to normal state that minimum amount of magnetic field that is termed as critical magnetic field at temperature t i hope this point is clear uh, for example i am taking mercury and for mercury you know the critical temperature is 4.2 kelvin let that material is kept at 3 kelvin so if the material is at 3 kelvin then obviously with respect to temperature that material should be in superconducting state now at 3 kelvin there is one uh, certain amount of field which is required to change the state of material from superconducting state to normal state so that minimum amount of magnetic field which is required to destroy the superconductivity which is required to change the state from superconducting state to normal state that minimum amount of magnetic field is known as critical magnetic field so you have to understand this point that critical magnetic field is having significance that will play its role only if the temperature is less than tc if the temperature of material is greater than tc then this critical magnetic field is not having any meaning because this magnetic field that is only required uh, below critical temperature because critical magnetic field is the amount of field required to change the state from superconducting to normal state i hope this particular point is clear now with this particular graph with this graph we can understand that how this critical field changes with temperature as you can see here you have a material and for that material this tc is representing its critical temperature so you know above this critical temperature this material will be in its normal state right and if that material is kept at a temperature t which is less than tc then in addition to uh, temperature there is one a uh, more factor which is critical magnetic field which can change the state of material from superconducting to normal state so you can see here this critical field is actually a function of temperature for example you can see here at this point at this point because along x axis you have temperature so at this point temperature is zero so when temperature is 0 kelvin then this temperature is not playing any role in order to decide the uh, state of material so at this particular temperature this magnetic field which is required the minimum amount of magnetic field which is required to destroy the superconductivity and which is required to regain the normal conducting state that particular field is known as critical field at 0 kelvin i'm repeating it again at 0 kelvin this hc not this hc not is the minimum amount of field which is required to destroy the superconductivity at 0 kelvin and now i am taking another temperature here let this temperature is t1 and that t1 is greater than 0 kelvin so as you can see from this graph when temperature increases you are moving from 0 kelvin towards this direction so when the temperature increases then at t1 the minimum amount of field which is required to destroy the superconductivity is at c t1 and you can easily uh, uh, conclude from this graph that at c t1 is lesser than at c not means with the increase in temperature that amount of critical field that minimum amount of critical field which is required to destroy the superconducting state that critical field will decrease i am taking another example suppose you have this material at temperature t2 which is further greater than t1 so you can see here the amount of field which is required to destroy the superconductivity at temperature t2 that is even lesser than t1 so this is critical field at t2 so you can see here the critical field that Uh, at a temperature at a fixed temperature t first you can you have to define what is critical field so at a temperature t critical field is that minimum amount 
which is required to destroy the superconductivity. Now, what is the meaning of this minimum amount of magnetic field? You can understand it like this. Suppose at T1, 3 Tesla, that is the minimum or that is a critical field. Means it is a minimum field which is required to change the state from superconducting to normal state. If the applied magnetic field is 3.2 Tesla or 3.5 Tesla, then obviously material will be in normal conducting state. So, that 3 Tesla is the minimum value which is required to change the state from superconducting to normal state. So, that is the reason uh, I am I'm referring this critical magnetic field as the minimum amount of magnetic field at a temperature T to change the state from superconducting to normal state. But you can also see from this graph that critical field is actually a function of temperature. This critical field is having meaning that is significant only between 0 and Tc. At 0 Kelvin, the amount of magnetic field which is required to change the state that is maximum in between 0 and Tc. And as you can see here, if the temperature is equal to critical temperature, so, as soon as the temperature of the material is equal to critical temperature, you know obviously there will be transition at, at this particular temperature from superconducting to normal state. Means, you do not require any magnetic field to change the material, change the state of material. So, this is the variation of critical magnetic field with respect to temperature. And this particular variation, this particular graph in mathematical form, it is represented by this uh, expression critical field at any temperature T that is equal to critical field at 0 Kelvin which is actually the maximum field required in between 0 and Tc to, to change the state of material from superconducting to normal state. So, this is at C naught into 1 minus T square T is the temperature at which the material is kept, at which you are defining this critical magnetic field. So, it is 1 minus T square upon Tc square and this Tc is actually the critical temperature or the transition temperature for the material. So, this Tc is fixed and this Hc naught, that Hc naught is also fixed because Hc naught is the uh, magnetic field required to change the state at 0 Kelvin. So, these two parameters Hc naught and Tc that is fixed for a particular material. So, this is the second deciding factor for the state of a superconducting material. So, the first one is critical temperature. So, as I have already mentioned that a material which is having the potential to show superconductivity that will show superconductivity only at a very low temperature, only at a temperature less than uh, Tc and Tc is known as critical or tra transition temperature for that material and different different materials they have different critical temperatures. Uh, the second parameter which is deciding the state of material that is known as critical magnetic field. So, what we have discussed over here, we have discussed that uh, below critical temperature, the state of material that is decided by two factors. One is the temperature of the material and the second one, uh, the magnetic field. So, at any temperature T which is less than Tc, actually the critical magnetic field is the minimum amount of field which is required to change the state of material from superconducting state, this is superconducting state to normal state. In this area, in this particular region, your material is in superconducting state, whereas beyond this graph, the material will be in normal conducting state, even if the temperature is below critical temperature, right? Now, I have uh, taken few examples, few numerical problems based upon this concept of critical field. Um, for example, I am taking the first problem. The critical magnetic field for lead is... 1.2 into 10 raised to power 5 ampere per meter at 8 Kelvin. So, what is given in the question? A critical field at 8 Kelvin is given and this critical field is 1.2 into 10 raised to power 5 ampere per meter. And uh, the critical field is 2.4 into 10 raised to power 5 ampere per meter at 0 Kelvin. So, what is given? The critical field at 0 Kelvin is also given. And this is 2.4 into 10 raised to power 5 ampere per meter. As we have already discussed that with the increase in temperature, the critical magnetic field will decrease. So, you can see here the critical field at 0 Kelvin is maximum. Uh, means that is greater than the critical field at 8 Kelvin. 
So now we have to find the critical temperature for this material. So you have this formula HCT is equal to HC naught into 1 minus T square upon TC square. So you have to simplify it for critical temperature. So you can write here this HCT upon HC naught. This is equal to 1 minus T square upon TC square. So further you can write that T square upon TC square is equal to 1 minus this HCT that is HC at 8 Kelvin divided by HC at 0 Kelvin. So you have to find this TC. So that TC will be equal to T upon under root 1 minus this HC at 8 Kelvin and divided by HC at 0 Kelvin. So you have the value of each and every term here. You have this temperature. So basically this temperature is 8 Kelvin and uh, divided by root 1 minus at 8 Kelvin, the critical field is 1.2, whereas at 1.2 into 10 raised to power 5 and at uh, 0 Kelvin, it is 2.4. So, you can see here, this is 1 by 2. So, it will be root 1 by 2. So, it will be 8 root 2. So, you can easily solve it and you can find the critical temperature of the material, which will be 8 into 1.414. You have to multiply this, then you will get the critical temperature for this particular case. So, this is a way to uh, solve the problems based upon critical magnetic field. So, another problem where you have critical temperature, uh, critical temperature of 3.7 Kelvin for this material and uh, the critical magnetic field at 0 Kelvin is also given. So, you have to find the critical field at 3 Kelvin. So, simply you have to apply this formula and you will get your uh, critical field at 3 Kelvin. So, the formula will be at C at 3 which will be equal to 0 0.02 into 1 minus that T is actually 3.7 uh, divided by, sorry, this is 3 Kelvin, that means 3 into 3 divided by 3.7 into 3.7. Just simplify it, you will get the critical field at 3 Kelvin. So, this is the way to uh, simplify the problems based upon critical magnetic field. Uh, so, as you have understood this fact, this fact that critical magnetic field is uh, one parameter which can change the state of material means if you will apply a magnetic field then even at a temperature less than critical temperature material can be in normal conducting state. So, it is not necessary that you have to apply the magnetic field from any external source. What you can do? You have a superconducting material means conductivity is infinitely high, resistivity is very small. So, easily that material can conduct. So, you can pass current through that superconductor and if the current which is passed through the superconducting material, that particular current will give you a magnetic field. If that current which is passed through the magnetic field at a temperature T which is less than Tc is giving you a magnetic field equal to critical field, then that current is known as critical current. I hope you are getting this point. So, uh, I am repeating it again you have a superconducting material in which temperature T is less than Tc. So, when the temperature is less than Tc, it means material is obviously in superconducting state. Now, what you have to do? You have to uh, pass current through the superconductor. So, when you are passing current through the superconductor, it will give you magnetic field. Suppose, the current which is passed through the superconductor that can give you a magnetic field equal to critical field then obviously the material will convert into superconducting state. So, this current which can give you a magnetic field equal to critical field, that current is known as critical current, right? So, it means your I, the current flowing in the superconductor, that will be critical current if H is equal to Hc. This is the condition. And in addition to that, you have to also remember that T is less than Tc. So, when the temperature of superconductor is less than critical temperature, uh, if you are flowing current to the superconductor and it can give, if it can give you a magnetic field equal to critical field, then that current, that IC is known as critical current. So, you can relate this critical current and critical magnetic field according to MPS circuital law and according to that, H is equal to I upon 2 pi R. So, the current Ic in terms of Hc that will be equal to 2 pi r Hc. So, 
three parameters we have already seen for superconductors. The first one is temperature. Second one is critical magnetic field. The third one is critical current. These three are the deciding factor for the state of a material. So, you can also solve problems based upon critical current. Uh, so, th uh, th this particular graph is giving you all the three parameters. Along this direction, you have magnetic field. Along this, you have critical current or you can say critical current density. And along the third direction, you have temperature T. So, if T is less than Tc, if temperature is less than critical uh, temperature, material will be in superconducting state. If the applied magnetic field is less than critical field, again the material will be in superconducting state. And if current I is less than Ic, even then the material will be in superconducting state. But once I is equal to Ic, below critical temperature, material will be in superconducting state. If H is equal to HC and T is less than TC, material will be in normal conducting state. So, these three parameters are actually going to decide the state of uh, any superconducting material. The first one is TC, the second one is HC and the third one is IC which is also known as JC. JC is conduction current density. So, you can also solve problems based upon critical current uh, like a one problem I have mentioned over here. Find the critical current. So, the aim is to find IC uh, which can be passed through a uh, long thin superconducting wire of aluminum of diameter 2 millimeter. Right? The critical magnetic field for aluminum is this HC naught is given actually 7.9 into 10 raised to power 3 ampere per meter. So, you know according to Ampere's law this IC that is equal to 2 pi r into HC. So, this is the formula. So, uh, simply what you have to do, you have to substitute the value of each and every parameter. This uh, uh, radius is act actually 1 millimeter. So, you have to convert it into meter. So, this will be 10 raised to power 3 here into uh, this HC naught is 7.9 into 10 raised to power 3. So, if you will simplify it, you will get the critical current which is approximately 49 ampere if I am correct. You can simplify it and you can find the value of critical current. So, these are the three basic parameters which are related to superconductors which are going to decide the state of uh, superconducting material that whether the material will be in superconducting state or normal state. If T is less than Tc, material is in superconducting state. But at below uh, critical temperature, you can change the state of material just by applying a magnetic field or just by passing current through the superconductor, right? So, these are the three uh, basic parameters of uh, superconductors. So, um, the next topic, Masner effect that I will discuss in uh, next lecture. So, that is all for, uh, for now and uh, these are uh, the reference books uh, which you can refer uh, for uh, basic concepts of superconductivity. So, that is all for today and uh, Masner effect we will discuss in our next lecture. Thank you so much.